Kenya has had four presidents since she gained independence in 1963. Each one of them has made history and left a legacy of his own. The founding father, Mze Jomo Kenyatta, was a man on a mission and with a vision right from the onset. His mission was specifically to see Kenya become an independent state liberated from the yoke of the British colonialists and also to achieve pan-Africanism throughout the African continent. This dream came to fruition in 1945 when he and other prominent African nationalist figures like Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana helped to organize the 5th Pan-African Congress in Britain. We believe that Kenyans are one nation. It is also consistent with the African people's past and present efforts to secure unity. It is also the logical answer to the challenge which Kenya or, or any new nation must face after independence. The consolidation of independence, urgent economic reconstruction and development, the need to make an impact and have influence at Pan-African and international affairs must be our immediate aim. The first hint at this mission was upon arrival from Britain when he declared, we have come out of the yoke of colonialism. What we have been struggling for is to redeem our country from the yoke of colonialism. Even before he ascended to the highest office in the land, his love for the motherland of Kenya and its people was evident in the way he dealt with the colonial masters. Mze Kenyatta was a selfless leader. He managed to galvanize the struggle for Kenya's independence. My leadership has not been to darkness and, 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 and death, but to light and prosperity. And it is because of this that he, along with five other nationalists, including Achieng Oneko, Paul Ngei, Bildad Kagia, Kungu Karumba, and Fred Kubai, were detained in Kapinguria for their quest for a free and independent Kenya. They were famously known as the Kapinguria Six. This detention flamed the independent struggle which was kept alive by other nationalists as the Kapinguria Six were locked up. The armed struggle that was to follow these events finally culminated to Kenya attaining her independence and Mze Jomo Kenyatta being installed first as Prime Minister when Kenya got the nod for internal self-rule and then as President in 1964 when it became a republic. His policy was that of continuity and gradual Africanization of the government, keeping many colonial civil servants in their old jobs as they were gradually replaced by Kenyans. As president, one of the most memorable of Mze Jomo Kenyatta's legacies was a call for a united country. His almost incessant call for Haram Bay, or pulling together as a nation, was a testament to this. Haram Bay! Yeah. Haram Bay! Yeah. <coughs> Haram Bay! Yeah. Na ma shamba yetu Haram Bay! Yeah. Na me fugo yetu Haram Bay! Yeah. Na sirikali yetu tukubu Haram Bay! Yeah. He firmly rallied against tribalism and divisive politics and he believed that through national unity, vices like poverty, disease and ignorance would have no place in Kenya. Mze Kenyatta was also a firm believer of justice and equality. This was even evident in his book, 
Suffering Without Bitterness, where he advocated for reconciliation and tolerance for the white race after all the suffering they had put the Kenyan people through. Mzee Kenyatta's call for unity went beyond the borders. His relationship with the presidents of the East African region and Africa at large was cordial and business amongst the East African community flourished greatly. The economic growth then was being compared to the Asian tigers. Mze Jomo Kenyatta's ideals for the struggle of freedom in Africa and beyond were replicated in many countries, and these shaped and determined Africa's political landscape during this particular era. Mze Jomo Kenyatta was a charismatic leader, blessed with the gift of the gab. Show the world that some of them has been wrong, that some of them have misunderstood us, and it's only by our action they will know that we mean business. Brothers, I think I have spoken enough in this language. It is not my wish that I should be speaking to you in a foreign and for that matter, in colonialistic language. A writer of note, a father and husband, and most importantly, the founding father of the nation. He was truly a man of the people. Thank you.